27th to the 30th for a Soul Cafe special series. No excuses. Sponsored in part by RMG Designs on Etsy.
Welcome to Soul Cafe Radio, where we cater food for the mind and soul. Please join us this hour for uplifting music, messages, and more. And now to the RMG Studios in Miami Gardens, Florida, and your host, the Word Master. Hello, friends. Welcome to Soul Cafe Radio for Sabbath, November 27th, 2021. Today, as we begin the series, I invite you to, if you're listening live, to go ahead, grab somebody, share a link, and please, please let them know. This is perhaps one of the most important things that they will hear this week, this day, this year. And if you're listening to the podcast, please, as I always say, don't be stingy about it. Share it with a friend. Again, this is perhaps one of the most important things they will hear in 2021. And I believe in the importance of this message so much that I'm going to give you a little bit before we go to the message, to the music, and more, to just give you a chance to go ahead and hit that share button. And so during the intermission for the next 30 seconds, as you're listening live, please go ahead and share this podcast. I promise you. Someone will thank you for sharing, I promise you. So I want to officially welcome you to Soul Cafe Radio today. We are beginning a four-day series entitled, No Excuses, Set Your Standards High. Today, we begin by looking at the quotation from which I grabbed the start. And as we go through it, I want you to just see the different ways that God is speaking to you and even through you as you desire to be an encourager to others. At this time, as always, as usual, I invite you to join me as we have a word of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your loving kindness and your tender mercies towards us. Thank you for being to us better than we've been to ourselves. Lord God, we thank you for taking us through this Thanksgiving season. We thank you, dear Lord God, for allowing us the opportunity that we've had to be alive and be in the land of the living, especially during this very trying, difficult week that we have all passed through. Thank you again, Lord, for your goodness and your abundant mercies towards us. And now as we come into this program today, Lord, I pray that the listening audience will be blessed and as always uplifted and edified. I thank you, dear Lord God, that the purpose of this podcast is being realized where indeed it can truly be food for the mind and soul and someone today will walk away more encouraged, more uplifted, more alive than they've been in a while. Continue to bless your words to our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So at this time, we're going to turn to our theme scripture reading, which is found in Luke chapter 1 and verse 37. Luke chapter 1 and verse 37. This is actually our theme scripture for the series, but today's scripture is a little bit different. Well, not a little bit, but you'll see what I mean. Luke chapter 1, and verse 37 says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Once again, thank you for joining me today on Soul Cafe Radio. It has been a pleasure preparing this study, and I pray that God will give you the strength, the encouragement, the desire to have no excuses. And as we conclude our November series, I pray that no excuses will be who 
who you are going forward. Stay tuned. You're listening to Soul Cafe Radio, food for the mind and soul. was paralyzed by fear when they heard a mighty multitude was quickly drawing near but as they prayed for deliverance the victory would begin for when we called upon the Lord we summon all Worshipping the Lord It seemed there was no hope at all For what would be in store But when we stand on holy ground Our smallest prayer is heard Instead of on our circumstance Our eyes are open They don't seem to make a difference. They don't seem to make a change. Just rest assured God knows your needs. And he hears each time you pray. Your prayers are reaching heaven. And the answer's on the way. Pray on. Dear listener, this is perhaps the secret of victory, a consistent prayer life. Pray without ceasing, the Bible says. And if you want to grow, if you want to mature, if you want to reach higher than you've ever been before, as our song that we sung in the intro said, you have got to stay prayed up. And no, it does not mean as Sister Mason just said, on your knees physically, but yes, on your knees all the time, consistently before the throne of grace. And you need, you need, brethren, to have no walls built up, friends, between you and God. You need to break every barrier down 
that seems to get in the way. We're going to begin the study in a few minutes, but I just wanted to interject here at this point. Just in case someone has to step away who's listening, I want you to know and understand that truly there is no excuses because as our theme scripture says, with God, nothing shall be impossible. And when we get back after our theme song for today, we'll have our study with our scripture focus, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. Stay tuned. You're listening to Soul Cafe Radio, food for the mind and soul. Please take a few seconds to support the channel. See the info in the description. Hey! 
Beloved, you are not alone. The Word of God tells us in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Let us pray. Father in heaven, as we begin this period of study, Lord, I ask you to engage my mind and speak to me so that you can speak through me to your people. Father, today, like no other day, this series, like no other series, O Heavenly Father, I am asking you to please, please, Lord God, just give me the words to say to encourage the hearts of your people. Strengthen my lips, O Lord God, so that I do not quiver and waver from the path that you are directing my mind to go down. Lord, Give me the understanding of your heart so that I may convey to your people without hesitation and without robbing the message of the validity of the truth as it is in Jesus. I thank you for the listeners, O Lord God, whether live or that will come on and listen to the podcast. I pray that you'll bless each and every one of them and that you'll give them the grace and the courage and the comfort that they need to face each circumstance, each situation that they're going through in their individual lives. Bless us now, Heavenly Father, going forward, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. No excuses. One of the things that I learned early on is that there is not going to be, in reality, any blue-suited as embossed on the chest wearing Superman coming to my rescue and therefore I realized as our theme song just says it's me and God in the journey and if I don't trust him to do according to what he says he will do then I would have the tendency to take up the work in my own hands and ultimately it would prove to be a failure. Today we have a reading and if you want to follow along, it's taken from the book, Christ Object Lessons, and it is page 30 and 31. It's under the subheading, Other Talents. It says, The Lord has a great work to be done, and he will bequeath the most in the future life to those who do the most faithful, willing service in the present life. The Lord chooses his own agents, and each day under difficult circumstances, he gives them a trial in his plan of operation. In each true-hearted endeavor to work out his plan, he chooses his agents not because they are perfect, but because through a connection with him, they may gain perfection. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Not because they're perfect. Sometimes, I'm going to be honest with you, as Christians, that's how we come off. We come off as these perfect people never made a mistake and therefore how could the person who has made all the mistakes in the world every day they wake up they figure well it's going to be the same routine I'm a failure and I could only fail and therefore they don't expect great things and they don't attempt great things. God is not calling for the person who feels that you know, I got it all together to reach the person who feels that I don't have it all together. He calls the person who doesn't have it all together and he refocuses his attention so that he can send them out there into a world of people who don't. And now he has a testimony to share with others. She has a testimony to share with others. They can say, I've been where you are and the Lord did this for me. And friends, as we go through the series, we'll be looking at different aspects of excuses because truth be told, and you know as you listen that this is no fallacy. We attempt certain things, but when it comes to others, we put up this wall and like you would have heard in the promo, we have these two giant letters right there on the exterior of whatever obstacle we're facing and oh and as soon as we see them automatically we think that no spells u-turn it does not and we'll see throughout this reading how 
we can surmount all these obstacles. Paul later on in earlier on actually the chapter before the one that we're looking at today he said that I press towards the mark of the high calling there's a measure that he wants to reach a full standard that he wants to attain to and his determination is that he will let nothing or no one stop him how about you dear listener God will accept only those who are determined to aim high set your standards high our theme for the series he places every human agent on the obligation to do his best. More perfection is required of all. Never should we lower the standard of righteousness in order to accommodate inherited or cultivated tendencies to wrongdoing. That's exactly what the vast majority of professing Christians do. Let's be honest. And, beloved, we're all... It's a fact. We've all been there. There's not one of us that have come through this humanity who has not been an object, an abject, and an object failure. Because, here's the truth. We may be strong in one area, and I mean super strong, that we're not even tempted in that area. It's, it will be pointless to do so. But in other areas, you know, the enemy of our souls, enemy of your soul and mind will just blow and we'll just tip over. So, feeble would even be our attempt to say, I can overcome this. But you know what? Never should we say, well, you know what? When God says, thou shalt not steal, he doesn't mean the paper clips from the office. After all, man, this company has billions of them. My boss won't miss one. You see what I mean? Even in that little trivial excuse that I just used, you could be training your mind to attempt greater thefts. Oh, there's a hundred dollar bill lying around here and this bank is full of them so they won't miss one. See what I mean? Setting the moral standards so that we can attain unto it. Oh, I know that I'm not supposed to according to the scripture lie but What's a little white lie among friends? And we could go on from there, but we don't have time in this hour. Never should we lower the standard of righteousness in order to accommodate inherited or cultivated tendencies to wrongdoing. We need to understand that imperfection of character is sin. How many of us understand that? Imperfection of character is sin. As long as we don't measure up to the full standards, to the high calling in Christ Jesus. We are consenting to the law that it is good, and therefore, that's why we try to lower the moral standard, because we feel that we cannot attain unto it, knowing who we are. Notice what he goes on to say, all righteous attributes of character dwell in God as a perfect, harmonious whole. And everyone who receives Christ as a personal Savior is privileged to possess these attributes. I'm going to say this, brethren, and I hope you understand that in you and in me, there's absolutely nothing good of ourselves. Nothing at all. There is no way that you can say that without Christ, you have perfect peace like a river. It is virtually impossible. Why? Because those are attributes. We looked at that the other day in the Galatians series. Those are attributes of the Spirit. The Spirit does not give you love, joy, peace, patience, and all those other attributes of the Spirit, independent of Himself. He doesn't say, here, John Doe, here, Jane Doe, have these. And He is not present. You cannot have true joy, true peace, true love without the manifested presence of God's Holy Spirit. So too, you cannot have a righteous moral character apart from the presence of God. That is why we sin, beloved. We push God out. There's a saying, ego is defined as edging God out. And that's what we have to do in order to sin. Because as the Bible says, as long as God's seed, his truth, his word, his life remains a part of our existence, we cannot sin. The moment we push God out of the equation, that's when we are on, no longer under the umbrella 
And that's when we sin. We need to set our standards high. Dear listener. Christ as a personal Savior is privileged to possess these attributes. He wants to be your Savior today. Every one who receives Christ as a personal Savior is privileged to possess these attributes. He wants to be your Savior today. And those who would be workers together with God must strive for perfection of every organ of the body and quality of the mind. In other words, every effort that is put towards whatever you do, it must be it must be done with the goal of doing it perfect in mind. As I often use the example for parents as you listen, you know for sure know for sure that you don't work yourself into an early grave. You, you, you don't work yourself into early gray hairs, spending money for your kids' uniforms or regular school clothes, their book bags and school supplies and lunch and, or lunch money just for them to come home with D's and F's. You don't pat them on the back when they come home with suspended for three days or your child is acting up in class notes. You don't do that. You don't say, that a boy, that a girl, look at the D, look at that F, I'm so very proud of you. You may encourage them to strive higher and better, but you do not accept mediocrity, which is C and D's, or abject failure, D's and F's. You strive, you tell them to strive for perfection. A's if you can, A's and B's, if you must. Beloved, why then do we accept mediocrity and failure in our moral character? Why do we say that we cannot be morally perfect when we truly expect, we truly expect our young people to be perfect? And not just in their schooling, but in their moral and ethical character. They tell you one lie one time, and it's over. And the list could go on of the more feelings that young people are prone to do. And yet, as parents, you forget that just the other day, just the other morning, when the bill collectors called, you said to you tell the kid, tell them that mommy's in the shower, she'll call him back later. Huh? Right? And those who could be and those who would be workers together with God must strive for perfection of every organ of the body and quality of the mind. True education is a preparation of the physical, mental, and moral powers for the performance of every duty. It is a training of body, mind, and soul for divine service. This is the education that will endure unto eternal life. There's someone who is listening right now, a friend of mine, a school teacher, who I know would truly appreciate that thought because that is what he said during our Galatians series the other day when he was interviewed. That, beloved, is true education. Of every Christian, the Lord requires growth in efficiency and capability in every line. Christ has paid us our wages, even his own blood and suffering, to secure our willing service. Did you get that? Did you get that, dear listener? How were you paid? Not with some paperback, not with some measly gold trinkets but with the precious blood of the dear son of God who gave his life for you that's how you were paid beloved and so if that is what backtrack 
in our common work for the most part the normal everyday worker does not really get paid what he deserves as I was sharing on Bible study Friday evening you work and you work and you work and then when payday comes what do you get? you get all these different agencies and organizations and causes getting the brunt of your money your wages garnished to satisfy this and that and you're just left with pittance for the most part and all these organization groups people are getting richer off your sweat and labor but notice in here what you're being paid actually pales what you're doing in comparison and so when the Lord says set your standards high aim high achieve greatness do not settle for mediocrity do me this favor brethren look at your paycheck that you get at work look at the aggravation and the sheer stress that you get on a regular work hour whether you work remotely or on site for the most part no matter what some people may say a lot of us are in pressure cooker environments and the payoff isn't that great but beloved in the service of the Lord the payoff is great all he asks is that you aim high set your mark high I press toward the mark the apostle says I want you to notice that Philippians 3 he does not say I press toward my mark he says I press toward the mark and that is what we need to do your listener we don't need to set our standards low we don't need to look for you know excuses why we can't do this we need to set our standards high and we need to aim high, not for our mark, but for his. Put it this way. Shoot for the stars. If you hit the moon, that's okay. Because that's what the common vernacular is. Shoot for the moon. Set your, set your standards high, dear listener. Don't settle for, oh well, I am a certain gender, a certain color, a certain religion, a certain nationality, and therefore the script that was written for me says, and therefore I have to follow. No, you do not. We're about to see that, and I believe it's coming up in a little bit, so keep on listening. It says, it continues, says, He came to our world to give us an example of how we should work and what spirit we should bring into our labor. He desires us to study how we can best advance his work and glorify his name in the world. Crowning with honor with the greatest crowning with honor with the greatest love and devotion, the Father who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Beloved, that, put it this way, let me paint you a picture. God did not send the angel that works in heaven's mailroom and say, go down there and die for them. I can't expend the life of anybody higher rank. Neither did he say to the CEO, the president of heaven's company, You've been a faithful and good worker. Now I need you to really prove yourself. Go and die for those people. Oh no, my friends. The Bible says that God, the owner, the founder of the company, says, I myself will go down and die for them. That is the standard to which you are to aim, beloved. The standard where God did not send someone who he would look at, you would look at as 
the angel that does this job or the angel that does that job, even the highest ranking one who we know as Gabriel, he did not send it either. He sent himself. The Bible says that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. And if he thought that highly of you, dear listener, not to send an angel in his place, why do we feel the need to dial it in? Why do we phone it in, oh my friends? Please, set your standards high. If you attempt, if you attempt much, friends, that's what you receive. A dear, dear, dear brother in the Lord, one I esteemed, who sadly passed on last year, he said, we must expect great things from God, and therefore we must attempt great things for God. And now, the area where I was telling you, this is actually the highlight of the study for today. But Christ has given us no assurance that to attain perfection of character is an easy matter. A noble, all-around character is not inherited. It does not come to us by accident. A noble character is earned by individual effort through the merits and grace of Christ. God gives the talents, the powers of the mind. We form the character. It is formed by hard, stern battles with self. Conflict after conflict must be waged against hereditary tendencies. We shall have to criticize ourselves closely and allow not one unfavorable trait to remain uncorrected. There you go, friends. We must set the standard high. God does not accept mediocrity. And frankly, friends, neither should you. Need people who say, oh, I cannot be perfect, I cannot live perfect, I cannot live without sinning. Imagine if the boss would act on the job. Do you think that you have the wherewithal to manage this company, to be a vice president, to be a senior manager? Would you say, no, you don't think so? Not at all. Even if initially that were the case, you will work your hardest to become the best. You, you, you would work so good that one day you'd end up on the cover of a business magazine. Boss of the year. Entrepreneur of the year. Look at what this man did, this woman did, to turn around this company. But you accept mediocrity in your own personal life and character. Why? Here we go as we continue. Let no one say, I cannot remedy my defects of character. If you come to this decision, you will certainly fail of obtaining everlasting life. Notice what it goes on to say. The impossibility lies in your own will. Brethren, if you will not, then you cannot overcome. Another dear gentleman used to say, if you aim at nothing, you will hit the mark every single time. And another person said this, there are no true failures. Everyone is a success. What? Fact. It is a fact. Everyone is a success. There are no failures. How then are we having a series about no excuses and you're saying that there are no failures? Because just as the other gentleman said, if you try to succeed at being a failure, you will achieve it. You will accomplish it. Friends, you see how serious this is? As we continue the series, we will get deeper and deeper into the heart of the matter. We will even go to the root of the reason why we frame excuses as to why we cannot. As to why we cannot. The real difficulty arises from the corruption of an unsanctified heart and an unwillingness to submit to the control of God. Here we go again. The real difficulty arises from the corruption of an unsanctified heart and an unwillingness to submit to the control of God. You know what the Bible says? In fact, let me read that for you. As Romans 
chapter 8, and let me find the verse. Romans chapter 8, verse 7 says, Because the carnal mind is enmity or at warfare against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. That's the condition of the natural, unconverted human heart, friends. And if you find yourself still in that warfare where you cannot see yourself fully giving your, the control of your life to God, you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself, as the vernacular says. And sorry for using that comment of a vernacular, but the point needs to be made. We cannot afford, beloved, to be in the condition where, as the Bible lets us know, that heaven is counting on us. Hebrews 12, verses 1 to 3. Many who God has qualified to do excellent work accomplish very little because they attempt little. As I just said, the brother said, if you expect great things from God, then you must attempt great things for God. Thousands pass through life as if they had no definite object for which to live. For the next few days, that's exactly what we'll be discussing. The no excuses people who figure that I cannot, I, I, I don't see a way past those giant N-O letters. No standard to reach. Search will obtain a reward proportionate to their work. Remember the one talent steward buried it into the dirt, figuring that even though I'm not investing it, even though I'm not doing what the master said, here's the thing. At least when he comes back, he's going to have some money because chances are I put it out there and there's no return on my investment. But you see, friends, he's living the opposite of that maxim. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. At least attempt. There's nothing wrong with trying. You fail, you fail. You just dust yourself off and get back on. But you see... Many people, after they've hit the floor, it hurts too much to even try. And I'm talking about the first time. And here we go, our high water mark of the study as we wrap up. Remember that you will never reach a higher standard than you yourself set. Then set your mark high and step by step, even though it be a painful effort, by self-denial and sacrifice, ascend the whole length of the ladder of progress. Let nothing hinder you, no excuses. Faith has not woven its meshes about any human being so firmly that he need remain helpless and in uncertainty. Opposing circumstances should create a firm determination to overcome them. The breaking down of one barrier will give greater ability and courage to go forward. Press with determination in the right direction and circumstances will be your helpers, not your hindrances. Beloved, what an awesome God we serve. To give us messages like these, to give us hope in the midnight hour, that is telling. He lets us know, as our theme song said, I am not alone, God tells us. He will never leave me, goes on to say. Friends, realize that, that the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. It is. You're only stepping into something that he's already stepped on and smoothed out the path for you. And as you walk behind him, as you follow him, you will see that it gets easier and easier, easier and easier. Oh, you've come too far to turn back now. Friends, you can't give up. You're in a winning fight, and the Lord is on your side. May God bless you super abundantly as you dare to believe these things. You're listening to Soul Cafe Radio. 
food for the mind and soul. Please take a few seconds to support the channel. Your grace See the and mercy brought me through. I'm leaving this moment because of you. I want to thank you and praise you too. Your grace and mercy brought me through. Your grace. I'm living this moment
Brethren, I want you to remember the words of that song. I know this hour we talked about what you are expected to do, but the truth of the matter is that at the end of the day, when we get over there, over yonder, and Christ puts those crowns upon our heads and says, well done, you overcame. And he, he, brethren, says, add a boy, add a girl, knew you could do it. You know what, brethren? You and I will take those crowns off in the same instant and cast them at his feet and say, no, Lord, it was you all along leading me on. Your grace in your mercy brought me through. And I'm here this moment because of you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for being with us during this moment. Lord, yes, we acknowledge our failures, our mistakes, Lord God. From the moment we wake up to the moment we hit the pillow again, Lord, our days are filled with so much of ourselves that it is crazy, Lord, to even imagine that we are supposed to be servants of the Most High. He who spoke the entire universe, he who created the universe, but with a word, let there be. Oh, Heavenly Father, why can't we be? Why don't we be? Lord, in this moment, help us, Lord, we need to have clearer, brighter vision. Lord, I'm praying for someone out there who's listening right now, who is feeling very low at the moment. Someone share this link with them, and they are grateful they've heard a message that it is the God of the universe that has brought me through throughout 2021. And now, Lord God, they are pondering, where do I go from here? Oh, Lord Jesus, come divinely near to that person and help them to see you for who you truly are. Father, I thank you so much for blessing us this day, for speaking to our hearts so eloquently. Help us, Lord God, not only to listen, not only to be hearers, but to be doers. Father, going forward, may we aim for the stars if we hit the moon. Awesome. But Lord God, help us never again to set our standards so low, seeing as how we serve not just a mighty God, the almighty, the almighty God. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for answering our prayers. And please, as we separate, Lord God, please bring us back once again around this format to hear from you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for your listening ear today on Soul Cafe Radio. It has truly been a pleasure. Please join us for the next three days as we delve deeper into this topic and look more as to why we need desperately to have no excuses, being that we serve an awesome God. God bless. Thank you for joining us today on Soul Cafe Radio. You've been listening to powerful music and messages for the mind and soul. Join us next time when we deliver more of the same. And remember to visit our website at www.soulcafeonline.org.